On today's episode of Glow Trotting with Trey, have you ever wondered why Meditation Garden is at Graceland? The place that Elvis and his mom and dad and grandmother now has their final resting place and that you can visit? Well, on today's episode, you're going to see the actual place in California that is the inspiration for the Meditation Garden at Graceland. Elvis loved this place. Stay tuned, you're going to see it. This is Larry Geller, Elvis Presley's friend, Mafia member, I would say probably a spiritual guru, probably best a way to describe Larry. And uh, Larry wrote a book called If I Can Dream. And in this book, he tells a story about the place that inspired Meditation Garden. So I'm going to read a section out of Larry's book to tell the story. So here we go. Elvis really took to meditation, and he practiced it daily. This is the greatest tonic in the world, Elvis said several times. Meditation is better than any drug I know. I can relax. I can breathe deeper. I'm calmer, Larry. Shortly after I started working with him, he decided to create a special place at Graceland where he or anyone could go to be alone to meditate, or to converse in profits. During the fall of 64, Elvis, Marty Lacker, and I designed the Meditation Garden, which was completed in the spring of summer of 1965. In truth, we didn't actually come up with a detailed design or plan for it, but Elvis's idea about the mood he wanted to create there were very definite. The garden was located past a swimming pool on the south side of the house. And guys, I'm sure most of you have been to Graceland and have visited the Meditation Garden. I am showing it to you on screen. It is where Elvis is buried today. If you haven't visited, make sure to make that special trip to Graceland after watching this video. And let them know Glow Trotting with Trey sent you. But anyway, let's get back to the story because I want y'all to learn why this place exists. The focal points were to be a circular fountain and a statue of Jesus. Marty, who between June of 64 was the group foreman, commissioned a Memphis sculpture. I believe it was actually a family member of Marty Lacker to create that statue. Modeling it after photographs i taken of similar one at the Lake Shrine in Southern California. The fountain was scented by colored lights and a few life-size figures of no particular significance were placed about. Although initially almost everyone around Graceland found the idea of a meditation garden a little bizarre, it became the place to go to get away from people or have a quiet chat. Elvis was quite proud of the garden, and we spent much time out there when we were in Memphis. Now, how in the world did Elvis get the idea to have a meditation garden? You're about to learn. So Larry says, by 1966, Elvis's involvement in his studies had exceeded reading and talking about the books I had gave him. In 1960, I began studying the teachings of Paramahansa Yogananda, an Indian yogi who came to the West in 1920 in an introduction to a collection of Yogananda's work. He had learned the secret of Kriya Yoga, an ancient science that enables the seeker of truth to attain a direct personal contact with God. Yogananda caused a sensation the first time he spoke in the United States at a religion conference in Boston. Reporting on his 1925 appearance in Los Angeles, the LA Times described him as a Hindu invading the United States to bring God, preaching the essence of Christian doctrine. He founded the Self-Realization Fellowship in Los Angeles around the same time. Elvis found Yogananda fascinating. He first read the Guru's international bestseller Autobiography of Yogi in 1964 and agreed with the many of the Self-Realization Fellowship's principles and teachings. Yogananda stated the go of his mission as to reveal the complete harmony and basic oneness of original Christianity as taught by Jesus Christ and original yoga as taught by Krishna. When Elvis learned that Yogananda's body remained incorrupted after the, his death in 1952, a fact documented by the mortuary director of Forest Lawn Memorial Park, he decided that he too would learn Kriya Yoga. Though by 65, Yogananda had been dead for a decade. The Self-Realization Fellowship grew under the direction of Yogananda's disciple sister, Sri Dayamata. I joined the SRF in 60 and met Dayamata four years later. 
She had first encountered Yoga Nanda when he spoke to an audience in Salt Lake City in 1931. I took Elvis to the Self-Realization Fellowship for the first time in 1965. Built on 12 acres, the Fellowship's Lake Shrine is one of the most beautiful places anywhere. Sitting in Pacific Palisades, the Lake Shrine includes statues of Buddha, Jesus, and other religious figures. Gandhi's World Peace Memorial, where some of Gandhi's ashes are enshrined, and breathtaking gardens. For a time, Elvis was going to the Lake Shrine quite often and bringing along other people. He liked to visit Brother Adolf, a teacher of mine who worked and lived there as a caretaker. Adolf was a disciple of Yogananda, with whom the Master lived while at the Lake Shrine. Elvis and Adolf took long walks around the lake. They'd sit on the benches and talk for hours at a time. Elvis also felt a special affinity for Dayamada. She is a beautiful woman, spiritually and physically, with graying hair and a very sweet, almost childlike voice. Elvis loved and respected her tremendously, and she loved him in return. So guys, this is where Elvis loved to come to. This is what inspired Meditation Garden, the Self-Realization Fellowship Lake Shrine in Southern California. I'm going to let you guys enjoy it and feel the peace that you definitely do get when you visit here.
Now listen to this funny story, and this is definitely Elvis. The first night we went to the self-realization, I had called Sister Diamata and told her that Elvis wanted to be initiated into Kriya. In order to be initiated, one must strictly adhere to a year-long daily program. <laughs> we know where this is going. That is adamant about time spent in meditation, special physical exercises, and a health regimen. Having studied for Kriya myself, I knew what lay ahead for Elvis, and so I carefully explained to him the degree of discipline and patience required. I believed he understood me, as was sometimes the cause when Elvis set his mind to something. His enthusiasm eclipsed all practical considerations. That night, Ella Fortis drove Elvis, Billy Smith, Marty Lacker, and me to Shri Diamata. Elvis met with her privately. She took him upstairs where they had talked for an hour or so. When they came downstairs, Elvis was beaming with pride. In his hand, he held two black leather books containing lessons, things to do in the forthcoming year to prepare for the initiation. Once we were in the limo and headed for home, Elvis said these are her personal books of the lessons. She wants me to read one lesson a week until I go through the whole thing once. Elvis took a deep breath, <sighs> sighed, and happily continued. Man, I swear to God, Larry, I haven't felt this good in I don't know how long. You were right. Diamata is like a saint. Then he confessed to doing exactly what I had feared he'd do. He asked Sri Diamata for a shortcut to attain Kriya. I love her. You know what she said to me, Larry? I asked her for Kriya Yoga. She said, I don't care if you are Elvis Presley. It doesn't matter who you are, how much money you have. You've got to earn it like everyone else. You've got to be ready. Otherwise, it's not going to work, Elvis. Not only is it not going to work, but I can't go against what is right. Elvis smiled in astonishment. Deya Mahdi had denied his request and he loved it. She was the first person to really stand up to Elvis that way. <laughs> and it made him happy. It just showed that people who spent years bowing down to Elvis, thinking that was all he wanted from everyone, they were wrong. <laughs> Tightly gripping the books, Elvis said, I trust her, Larry. She doesn't have any motives. She doesn't want anything from me except that I do the right thing. She reminds me of my mom. And I don't say that lightly. There's just something about her. Once it was clear that he'd had to work toward the Kriya himself, Elvis redoubled his efforts in the readings and meditations. we go up to the Lake Shrine where Elvis could walk among the other students and the masters unharassed. Here he was truly in a different world. His being Elvis Presley meant absolutely nothing. Occasionally someone might glance in his direction or nod, but for the most part, being there was like being in the army. Basically, he was anonymous for the first time in nearly a decade. Of course, Elvis never did get the Kriya for several reasons. One is that while his heart truly was in it, he didn't follow the instructions the way he was supposed to. Though he enjoyed being just like everyone else at the Lake Shrine, and he respected Sri Diamata for not giving in to his request to compromise her principles for him, he had grown so accustomed to getting instant results that he found the program impossible to stick with. Later, sometimes in the 70s, Elvis persuaded me to do something that was very wrong. After one is initiated into Korea, one learns a special technique, which is performed each day. It's a secret veiled to only the people initiated, who in turn vow not to reveal it to anyone else. One day Elvis and I got into a big discussion about this, and I agreed to tell him how to do it, and I did. But I felt terribly guilty afterward, and rightfully so. It was like giving somebody a mantra without his learning his lesson in transcendental meditation, or the keys to a car he didn't know how to drive. It was ethically and morally wrong, and I went to see Diamata to confess. She was patient and loving, but she sternly warned me, don't you ever do it again. Despite his failure to receive uh, Korea, Elvis maintained the greatest respect for Sri Diamata, the self-realization lake shrine, and the teachings of Yogananda. So there you have it. Elvis was here once upon a time in his life in an inspired meditation garden that we all have now when we visit Graceland and a place to pay our respects to Elvis. Thanks for watching this episode of Glow Trotting with Trey. I hope you liked it. If you did, give me a thumbs up, share it with your Elvis friends, and don't double dribble. Subscribe to Glow Trotting with Trey to stay updated with every new Elvis episode that I upload each Tuesday and special episodes here and there. 
Until next time, I'll see you down the road. Thanks for watching.